Uh, dear sister Tiffany Cross speaks out about her MSNBC firing and other stuff. I'll just put it up for a mass. Um, on her podcast, Native Land Pod, which by the way has been getting significant play on Indisputable because they're doing interesting things. Native Land Pod with Angela Rye and Andrew Gillum. Tiffany Cross would share about her time working on MSNBC. So Cross actually first would talk about working with Joe, Joe Scarborough. Here it is. I was invited to appear on Morning Joe. So um, Joe Scarborough, I'm sure y'all have watched Joe Scarborough before. On the segment right before I was coming on, Joe Scarborough started saying that he wanted the Republican Party to get their act together. He didn't want his country run by some of the leftists who were running countries like Portland. And he called out some other um, municipalities that this was right after at the height of Black Lives Matter. And so uh, he said, we got to get it together. And the Republican Party is failing. Donald Trump turned the party racist. So when I was introduced, I obviously had a, a lot to say about that, that there's an unspoken rule that you're not supposed to disagree with Joe, but I didn't get that memo. Even if I had, I don't know how much attention I would pay to it. And so when it came time for me to speak, I uh, went through very specific policies, um, talked about Ronald Reagan, talked about um, George Bush and made the point that even though they may have been more articulate, their policies were just as damaging to black folks. Well, after I got off the air, he continued to talk about it. Uh, he was very upset, apparently. And so when he left set, uh, he was beside himself. That's how it was described to me. I was told from several reputable sources, including a talent agent, two anchors, and another executive at the network, that he left set and went into the president's office, the president of, of the mm -hmm. network, to complain about my segment, complained that I disagreed with him, said that I called him racist, and suggested that I should not be Joy Reid's successor uh, to get the show. Well, damn. Spill all the tea. I'm here for it. And there's more. She then talked about her battles that she faced while working on her show, The Cross Connection. Here it is. I want you all to know every single week from the start of my show to the very last show I did, it was a battle. Every single week, it was a battle to cover things that I wanted to talk about. Um, the network's philosophy was Trump, 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 Trump. Um, they wanted me to be part of the echo chamber, and I fought as hard as I could. When I would fight these battles, I know y'all know exactly what I mean. I was spoken to in the most condescending ways. I mean, anything from being told the definition of news, me with my 20 plus year career in news and broadcast and television, I would have somebody sit across from me and explain to me how news worked. Um, I had my intelligence questioned. The central theme to them, again, Trump, Capitol Hill minutia, and they wanted me to use the same recycled faces you see all the time. So I really found the constant uh, criticism debilitating at times, but mostly confusing. And let me tell you why, because viewers seem to love it. According to NBC's mm -hmm. own research department, The Cross Connection, my show, was averaging 4.6 million viewers a month. We had the most black viewers, mm -hmm. second only to Reverend Al Sharpton show. We were routinely the highest rated show of the entire weekend in fighting these battles. I can't lie, I made some enemies. Um, yeah. I held the line, I didn't acquiesce because for me, what was the point in having this platform if I'm gonna show up and spit out uh, some vanilla granola boringness and hope that one day, maybe the white man will let me host his Today Show. I, I've just never seen that happen. I have never seen anybody be rewarded for acquiescing to the comfort of white folks. Such an amazing talent, an amazing soul. Here's her talking about being let go. But one night, uh, Tucker Carlson dedicated the top of his show to me. After this, the network did not issue a statement uh, the way they had for some of my white colleagues who had also been targeted by MAGA extremists. Instead, network executives spoke to me and instructed me that I could not respond to Tucker Carlson at all. 
Then they began to scrutinize my show. Every little thing I wrote, every little thing I said before the show, after the show, after the show, it was always, here's all the things that you said. Here's all the things that you did wrong. The ratings didn't lie, but according to them, people must just be tuning in to criticize me because that's all they had was criticism. Never, thanks for doing a good job. Never, thanks for bringing so many new viewers to the network. Uh, this was four days before midterms and one day before my show was going to air. We had booked an exclusive sit down with Stacey Abrams, who as you all know, was in the fight for her life running for governor at that time. That morning, I got a call from the president of the network saying they would not be renewing my contract, which was up in a month, and that my viewers would not even be given the courtesy or respect of me being able to sign off or have a final show. Uh, I think it's important that you all know when that happens, it suggests to other people in the yeah. industry that this person is so unhirable that we could not trust her with a live mic. And I was never given an official reason for why they canceled my show, but it was pretty obvious that I had drawn the ire of white conservatives, which even made some white liberals uncomfortable. So I had to go. Never mind that millions of people found my voice to reflect theirs. Despite me not saying anything at the time other than to issue a very politely worded and gracious statement, mostly for my viewers, um, a statement in which did not attack the network at all uh, or say anything bad about them. The network began attacking me. They planted yeah. hit pieces in the press. Um, the president of the network began a bizarre unhinged tour where she was on damage control. I don't know what she was trying to do, um, but it was filled with outright lies, uh, including showing up on the set of The View. It's very strange for the president of a competing network to show up at another network and talk directly to their talent. That just doesn't happen. It's a damn shame she had to go through that. Obviously, she is not the only one who has echoed the sentiment that you just heard, very proud of her elevation and her honesty. The transparency not only provides therapy for the individual, but also for us understanding that common reality that many face. Um, I want to take a moment to say thank you to somebody in my early career, because I never realized how powerful that moment was back then. There's a guy named Steve Dorr. Steve was an executive for the local CBS News Atlanta station. It was the first time I was on television years ago. And I was brought on as their political analyst. And I remember saying to Steve something to the effect of, um, I may not be the brand you all are looking for because I'm a strong cup of coffee for the news. And Steve looked at me and he said, just be who you are. And that moment was a powerful moment. I was going to be me no matter what, but knowing that he was endorsing that, I never knew how rare it was. That was years ago. And the stories I hear today that are so antithetical to the, to the promotion of truth, everything is measured and manipulated and sanitized. We're supposed to be in an industry that cares about the authenticity of debate. The reality of cause and effect. If somebody takes a hit at one of ours, damn it, we take a hit back at them. Way to go. All right, David, thoughts here. Well, full disclosure, I worked at MSNBC for eight years. Uh, I was fired in uh, 2010, and there's a whole set of circumstances. Um, but what I, I, first of all, I want to salute Tiffany for her courage in speaking out because it takes a lot of guts to do this. Um, What's so sad about to me and hearing what Tiffany said is Tiffany lost her show. She was fired in 2022. That was a different MSNBC president than the one that I had to deal with in some of the same sort of issues. So I'm saddened to hear that the relatively new regime at MSNBC is perpetuating some of the same problems, some of the same snake pit tactics, going to the media, leaking things about you, not circling the wagons and defending you against other talent, but instead being more concerned about, oh, well, we need to pound this nail into the sand because we don't want anybody to stick out. I am so saddened to hear that that still exists at MSNBC. And I think it's a reason why I think a lot of progressives intuitively and instinctively know that even though MSNBC is supposedly representing a more progressive or liberal counterpoint to say Fox News and maybe even CNN, there's still a certain amount of corporatism and white privilege that exists even at MSNBC. It is still part of that corporate system where certain people are not going to get a fair shake, no matter what MSNBC claims to stand for. And I salute Tiffany for 
pulling back the curtain on this as ugly as it may be. Yeah, very well said. And man, they missed a great opportunity for contrast. Tucker is an idiot. Uh, and Tiffany was right on the commentary. And so I can't believe they allowed that to steamroll anything. Um, hell of a thing.